more severe. Now, Jim Forrest, who worked with O'Reilly as a sound engineer on the day of this riot, told me, quote, there were certainly no dead people. Had there been dead people, they would have sent more camera crews. Unfortunately, some of the other staffers we talked to are insisting on anonymity because they still work in the industry or because they don't want to be criticized by Bill O'Reilly. But Eric Engberg is speaking out. He was a correspondent for CBS News for 26 years, and he and O'Reilly were both in Argentina during that war. He joins me now from Sarasota. Eric, thank you for being here. Yes, good morning. Let me just cut right to it. Is Bill O'Reilly lying when he describes this combat situation? Well, I think that what he's doing is he's trying to build it up into a more frightening and deadly situation than it was. It wasn't a combat situation by any sense of the word that I know. There were no people killed. Uh, he said that he saw troops fire into the crowd. I never saw that, and I don't know anybody who did. And I was there on the scene. What's interesting is, not only did I not hear any shots, I didn't see any ambulances, I didn't mm. see any tanks, I didn't see any armored cars, all of the things that you would have expected to see had mm. people been shot. A couple of things we should share with the audience. Number one, I tried on Thursday and again on Friday to reach Bill O'Reilly through Fox News. I asked him for an interview and uh, Fox News declined on Friday. I've asked him for comment again this morning on these allegations we're, we're describing here from all these staffers and so far they have not responded to those allegations. Uh, I also want to mention that you said that yesterday O'Reilly's team reached out to you. They've asked you to go on the O'Reilly factor and you've said no. Why is that? I don't want to turn this into an argument on his uh, turf over what he did that night. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm simply stating the facts. The facts speak for themselves. If he has a response to what the facts are, that's fine. Let him lay it out. I'm not going to argue about it. I, I do want to play some uh, the sound. The one thing I am going to argue sorry, go about, ahead. Brian, the one thing I am going to argue about, and the thing that's gotten me talking about this, is that in one of those tapes, you haven't played it, but in I, one actually, of those I think tapes, I know what one you're going to refer to. Let me, let me play a couple of these sound bites and see if they're the ones you're that. referring to. So here's the first one. This is from the Hamptons in 2009. When the uh, Argentine surrendered uh, to the British, uh, there were riots in the streets of Buenos Aires. I read about this in my novel, Those Who Trespass. Um, and I was out there pretty much by myself because the other CBS news correspondents were hiding mm -hmm. in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, wait, wait, you got to get out and cover the story, mm -hmm. which I did. So, Eric, that was the first time, but I wanted to have I, you react to it because he says nobody else was out there that night, but you're a CBS News correspondent was, who says that, you were out what there. He just, what he just said is a fabrication, a lie. There were five CBS News correspondents, including him, assigned to that bureau. They were under the direction of Larry Doyle, one of our very best field producers. You Marines out there will understand what I'm saying. He was a lerp in the Marines in Vietnam before he went to CBS. He's a very skilled operator in combat and dangerous situations. He mm -hmm. sent all five of the correspondents and all 10 or 12 of the camera crew members out into the street. Nobody stayed in their hotel room because they were afraid. We were all working, and uh, we saw uh, what, looked, what was a moderate-sized riot. It was a couple of thousand people attacking the Casa Rosada or or the area around the Casa Rosada by waving their arms, by clapping and chanting and singing songs. Nobody attacked the soldiers. Nobody attacked the police. Uh, there, were no, uh, there was nobody lying on the ground when it was over that I saw. But at any rate, all of the CBS people did their jobs, covered the demonstration, brought their video back to be used in a story that night, and that was when O'Reilly bucked at the idea of turning his tape that was shot by his cameraman over to the uh, unit that was putting together the story. When Doyle said, Bob Schieffer will do the story tonight and will use the video your crew shot, he said, I didn't come down here. According to, this is according to Larry Doyle, who remembers it well. O'Reilly looked at him and said, I didn't come down here to shoot video so that this old man can use it in his story. And Larry Doyle said, what old man are you talking about? And O'Reilly said, Schieffer. Well, they took, they wrestled the tape from him, and they used it in the Schieffer piece. And Doyle turned to uh, O'Reilly and said, I think you better leave. You don't belong here. And Doyle took steps 
to send O'Reilly out of Buenos Aires to send him home. O'Reilly, by the way, according to Doyle, said, you can't send me out of here. And Doyle said, oh, yes, I can. And uh, maybe it was the last time O'Reilly has ever been beaten down in a shouting contest, but Larry Doyle did it. I should also say that Larry Doyle was one of those people who are extremely concerned about the safety of the personnel who are going out on the street during a riot situation. And he had instructed all the camera crews, do not turn on your lights in the midst of this riot, because lights will draw a crowd, they will cause people to throw rocks at you, they may get somebody hurt. So shoot only things that can be shot in the dark. Mm. O'Reilly ordered the cameraman that he was working with to turn off to turn on his lights in violation of that instruction. And when Doyle found out about that, he was extremely upset. I think the cameraman was upset, too, that he had been exposed to danger. Yeah. Now, I'll be more than happy to talk about his claim that there were people killed if you want to hear my view or my take on it, Brian. Well, what I want to try to get to are the facts on the ground that night. And, and by the way, I should tell the viewers, Doyle uh, declined to talk on the record about this today. But let me play one more soundbite. This is one that I haven't seen uh, covered in the past few days amid all this controversy. This is from 2011, an onstage interview with O'Reilly and Marvin Kalb. Take a look. I get a call from the CBS bureau chief to say, O'Reilly, get down there. Great. I'm down there. I got my two crews. So I'm looking around. Where are the other CBS correspondents? I don't see anybody, okay? Maybe they're busy, maybe they're on the other side of the Casa de Rosada, I don't know where they are. So anyway, all hell breaks loose. The people start to storm the, the Casa Rosada. The Argentine troops shoot the people down in the street. They shoot them down. It's not like rubber bullets or gas. It's people are dying, all right? So anyway, I get my crew and I grab my crew away. We're down a side street, we're, sh we're shooting all this stuff. It's unbelievable. I mean, people just falling, went bing, 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 bing. Soldier runs down the street. I'm there. Uh, photographer gets trampled. All right, so he's on the ground. I grab him and the camera and drag him into a doorway. The soldier comes up and he's standing maybe 10 feet away. He's got the M16 pointed at my head. I thought it was over. And I said, periodista no dispari. That means journalists don't shoot. Por favor. Guy was about, I don't know, 18, 19 years old. He didn't shoot me. So, Eric, we've had no luck corroborating this so far. Can you help us with that? Is there anything that sounds correct I can't, to you? I, I, I did not just see that happen. I didn't see anything like that happen. I don't know of any, uh, of any American foreign correspondent uh, who had a, a weapon pointed at him. But the important thing is I didn't hear any gunfire. Not only did I not hear any gunfire, as I say, I didn't hear any sirens. I, would have re I came to Argentina from years of experience in Washington covering anti-war demonstrations against the Vietnam War in Washington. And I saw more violence in anti-war demonstrations in D.C. Mm. than I saw in Argentina that night. It was over quickly. It was over within two hours. And... Uh, the, the, the people did not try to storm the Casa Rosada. They were held back by troops standing there. You can see them in the video. They did not tangle with those troops. They did not try to crash into the building. And uh, it was really a fairly minor incident. It did result in the downfall of that government, but it was ready to go anyway. Oh, and by the well, way, let me it's share one with of you. Those, it, yeah, Let me ahead. just share one, one more detail, which is uh, what O'Reilly is now citing this morning, and I was uh, emailed this by Fox News right before we went on the air, is a New York Times story uh, from the moment. It says that uh, one policeman pulled a pistol, firing five shots over the heads of fleeing demonstrators. So in that New York Times story, they are describing gunfire having happened. You're saying you personally over did not hear or see any of... gunfire. No, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that firing. But I read that story the next day, and you will notice the, that the phrase is, as you say, state, over the head. That's vendetta against O'Reilly. You described him as a clown on Facebook. Is this simply about a personal dispute? No. He's the one that started the personal dispute by saying that we were all hiding in our hotel rooms. <laughs> it sure does not sound like By the way, I, in, I do have this personal dispute. <laughs> I have this personal dispute with him. He's not a real reporter, and he's, 
He was not in a combat zone that night. This was not a combat zone, not even close. Well, Eric, stay with me. I appreciate you being here this morning. And let me just reiterate for the audience, we, we have repeatedly asked for an interview with O'Reilly. I would love to talk to him about this, but I was turned down uh, on Friday. So the